Hi, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to take a look at an application called iMazing. Now one of the great things about uh, this application is the fact that it allows you to connect your iPhone or any iOS device like your iPad to your Mac and it allows you to do things that you normally couldn't do with the device through the regular operating system. And so what I'm going to do is walk you through how this works so that you get a good idea for how the application is set up. So if you look here, this is the interface. You can see that I have my iPhone XS Max connected uh, to my uh, iMac through iMazing. And you can see I have all these different available options here. These will match what I have in the center. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and collapse this down. If I had multiple iOS devices, those would show up on the side if I had those connected. Now, one of the great things is I can connect either wired or uh, over Wi-Fi. As long as my iMac and my iOS device are in the same Wi-Fi network, I can com uh, connect uh, via Wi-Fi instead of having to use cables, which is a really nice touch. Uh, you'll notice in the middle here, we have all these different options uh, that we can do. We also have some options down the side over here, and then you have information on your actual device that you have selected on the side over here. Down below, we have uh, an indicator for my storage as well as my battery life uh, over here as well. So let me just walk you through some of the things that you can do, and I'm just going to start with these options here. Uh, the first is you can perform a backup uh, of your iOS device. Now the difference is you can backup to your iMac instead of doing the iCloud backup. There are a number of options that I can change in here. I can change the automatic backups uh, to either not be backed up automatically or to do it automatically on a particular time schedule or when my battery life is at a certain level. I'm just going to leave that alone there. I can also choose to enable backup encryption if I want to do it that way so that I can encrypt those backups. Uh, so that will um, uh, include things like you know your health data and all of that uh, will not be backed up if you do it without encryption. So it does have some safety features built in and I can enable that uh, backup encryption right here just by hitting that and then I would create a backup password. Uh, I'm just going to cancel for now. I can choose my backup locations and put them wherever I want. The default is in the library application support iMazing folder. Uh, but again, I can change that and add other backup locations. Uh, I can also choose how to handle backup archiving, whether I want to do that or not, so that it saves space. Uh, I can automatically clean archive backups, and I can choose what time frame I want to do that all the way up to a year there. Uh, so I can have some management of those backups so it doesn't take up too much space. I can choose to enable or disable Wi-Fi connection, so it just depends on whether you want that or not. And then there's a few additional options here, like uh, low battery notifications. I can choose what percentage or never, and to launch iMazing when connecting via USB. So anytime I connect my device by USB, it's going to launch iMazing. Uh, let me just leave that alone, and we'll come back out here. Uh, I can also do things like quick transfer, uh, which means I can take a file, like let's just say I have one here, and just drop it in here. And what it's going to do is it's going to find a compatible app for that particular item that I dropped, and I can choose the target of where I want this to go. So I can choose what application I want it to go into. So let's go ahead and just say uh, DevonThink. I'm going to say transfer. And so now what it's going to do is it's going to actually do a quick transfer of that item into my DevonThink application, and that item will be sitting there when I need it. So this is great when you need to transfer things to your iOS devices, and you don't want to do it through iCloud. You just want to quickly drop them in there. You can use that quick transfer to do that. Uh, there's also the option to restore a backup. So if I had any backups here, I can restore from those. Let me just cancel that out. So uh, again, I can handle all of the uh, backup and restore right from this application. I can also uh, transfer to another device. So if I've got another device that I have connected, I can transfer what's on this iPhone to that other device. And that's nice if you want to clone one device to the other. You can kind of transfer all your information over, and it does it really efficiently there for you. Now down here, I can manage the applications that I actually have on my iPhone. So it's going to go and load all of the apps there. And you can see here are the apps I have in my library where there's a download available. And you can see whether it's installed or not. 
And I can choose to download these if I want to keep the actual file on my Mac. This is what you used to be able to do with iTunes when you would download the actual IPA files. I can also check to see what's on the device itself, and these are the ones that are there. And if I just uh, select one of them, and if I just uh, control click, I can choose to uninstall uh, the application. I can back up the data. I can restore the app data, install a file, or check for updates. And I can do that all from here. And I can select multiple files, so I can do multiple deletes of applications all at one time. So this is a nice way to clean up your devices uh, if you want to do that in terms of the applications you may not be using. I'm just going to go ahead and say done. Now, I also have other options in here. Uh, again, these are the options that I showed you earlier. I'm just going to say done uh, right there. I can also check on warranty, and this is kind of nice. It takes you over to Apple's website and automatically fills in the serial number of your device so that you can check your warranty. Uh, again, just a really nice uh, touch on that to make it easy. I could use to sleep my device, restart it, shut down. I can export all the data on my device. I can export the raw files, and I can show uh, the device console right here. And so what this is doing is taking me into the actual console of my device itself. And so I can get access to that. I can print it uh, and, and those sorts of things. You can see all the stuff that's going on right now on my device in the console. Let's go ahead and shut that down. Now, I also can choose to forget this device if I don't want it to show up in iMazing anymore. And I can even do software updates right from here. You see that I do have an update that's available. I can reinstall uh, iOS or I can erase all the content on this device. So as you can see, it's really a full featured application for your iOS devices. Okay, so I went ahead and did a backup uh, just to show you all of the different features. You can see I've got my backup up here of my iPhone. And you can see I've got some information about uh, how many backups I have and all of that over here. Again, one of the things you'll want to remember is depending on how much you have on your phone, that's going to determine the size of your backup, which means that you're going to want to have enough disk space to cover the backup. So I've got this backing up to an external drive, which is nice that you can set it up that way as well. So let me just walk you through all of the things that we have here that are accessible on our phone. So the first is if you come in here, we've got our files. And so you can see that I have files related to different applications. So depending on the application, I can click in and get access to those files. So that's a nice feature because it allows you to drill into the file structure. One of the things you'll notice down here in the toolbar is you can choose to copy specific items to your Mac, copy things from your Mac to your device, delete items, create new folders, create a new shortcut, get info, and then you've got other options over here of things to do. So you can act on whatever it is that you select inside of here. Uh, the other thing is the camera area, and so it shows my photos in camera. It'll do the same thing with the Photos app. It'll go and pull the different photos that I've got there. And you can see it's got them grouped by uh, their different folders. you got, got all photos, camera, favorites, etc. I've also got my music that's sitting on my device along with all of my different playlists and ratings. I've also got uh, a TV, so I've got movies and TV shows in here as well. And those are ones that exist on my phone itself. Uh, I can get access to ringtones if I've got any in there, as well as books. So these are different books that I have on my device. Uh, I've also got access to all of my messages. Again, this is very nice because I can choose to export the messages to PDF, to Excel, to export as CSV, and to export to text. So, and then if there's any attachments, I can export those attachments as well. So again, a really nice uh, set of features here. Of course, I can print over there as well. Now, if I come down to the actual phone area, you'll see here that it can't load uh, the data unless I have an encrypted backup enabled, and I don't have that, so I can't get access to that. Uh, but I can get access to my voicemail in here as well. Now, when I come to Safari, I have the same issue with Safari uh, in terms of history, but I can get access to my bookmarks as well as my reading lists in here. If I go to calendar, you can see I've got access to my calendar here. I can choose the different date ranges that I want to use as well as select whatever calendars I want to view. Right now, I just have U.S. holidays checked. Uh, but I can do the same thing, export to Excel, CSV, or just export uh, to the calendar app. And then I've got the same with contacts. All my contacts are in here with the same types of options with the exception of being able to also export to vCard or import from contacts into my phone or impact, uh, import from a vCard. If I go through my notes, all my notes are accessible in here. Same type of thing, export to PDF or text or print. I have access to my voice memos where I can export them. I have access to all of my apps as well. 
Same thing, I can manage the apps and I've got folders and all kinds of information over here. And then I can also get access to my file system. And this is nice too, because I can drill through the file system for apps or for documents, media logs, and then the backup itself. So again, a lot of different options uh, built into the application. Uh, one more thing that I do want to show you is that there is a mini version of iMazing that will run in the toolbar up here. If I just click on this, you can see that it gives me an update on when my last backup was, my battery life, how I'm connected, as well as uh, information here on how much storage I'm using. You can see if I hover over it, it tells me how much I'm using for each type of storage. Uh, I can also come in here and I can get more information, checking for updates and preferences and all of that, including launching iMazing or quitting the application. And then if I just click on this, you can see that I can uh, show backups, battery diagnostics, check warranty. Again, just a number of things that I can do with this application. So that gives you a tour of iMazing. As you can see, there are a number of great things that you can do with the application that goes beyond what you can do with other things. And if you really want access to what's happening on your phone or you want to perform your own backups instead of relying on iCloud, then iMazing would be the application for you. One of the things that iMazing is doing during Black Friday is they do have a sale. And so I've got a link down below if you want to click on that to get a special discount. Uh, otherwise, you can check out the application at any time. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac. If you're interested in help in setting up your own Mac or software or need some troubleshooting help, feel free to contact me at todd at toddoltoff.com.